Coach, did you rest a lot of a lot of the veteran guys not play for you in the scrimmage last on Saturday? Uh, just the guys who've been kind of on that pitch count. So, you know, we did we did about an hour's worth of practice first. So we did Indy, seven on seven, nine on seven, one on one pass rush. We did spring league two minutes. So all those guys got all that work. But then we held out um, Ty and Nash, who we've been holding out of all the live stuff. Tommy and Giff, Keith. Um, uh, on offense, I held out uh, uh, Ben Hart, Ben Scott, and um, Jamal Banks. Fedoni got a little work. So the guys who have a ton of reps or something like that, you know, to me, once you get hit a thousand reps, it's kind of like you know, let the young guys play. So, but for the for the most part, we had, you know, everyone else I thought really competed. We came out of it pretty healthy, which was great. And uh, you know, for us, it's like a it's like a blood test. You know, you. You send your blood off. They tell you how you're doing, and for for us as coaches to see what we're doing well, for the players to see what they did well, a lot of good things came out of the scrimmage. But uh, yeah, we did hold a couple guys. You think you'll have a similar plan for uh, this, this Saturday scrimmage, and, and also next week as far as holding the the veteran guys out, or what, what's your what's your thought there? Yeah, I'm not going to scrimmage th those five or six guys. You know, seven guys. Um, um, at any point, it's kind of how I've always done in my career. I learned from Coach Paterno. Once you were like a fifth-year senior, just kind of if you had been a multi-year starter, you didn't, you didn't, you know, you didn't do a ton. We do more here, team-wise, but I, you know, I can't say specifically in the spring game because we might change that. But as it relates to this Saturday, I would, I would assume we'd hold some of those guys. How do you see those QBs handle that that Saturday scrimmage? Uh, you know, I thought they, you know, I thought they were really good. Um, you know, it's a really hard defense to go against. And I thought we protected the ball well, which was the first thing, right? Like we're on a mission to be in the positive territory on turnover margin. So I think there was only one turnover on the day um, through, through you know, you know, a lot of reps. Um, I thought they handled all the pressures. I thought they adjusted all the different things. But the biggest thing is, you know, get into the stadium for the first time and uh, have you know? I put crowd noise on, so you can't have coaches out there like, no, cut your split. Coaches are the worst, so they want to tell guys what to do. So I put crowd noise on, so you couldn't hear from the sideline, and you know, just wanted to test the guys and see what they knew. And um, a lot of things to work on, you know, but a lot of positive things. So um, I think we've made a lot of strides in a short amount of time. How do you kind of how do you kind of balance that in the spring, where obviously you're emphasizing protecting the ball, but you know, defensively you also are trying to get turnovers and get the ball out too. I mean, how, how's that? kind of push and pull work. Yeah, well, well, I mean, we just push it on both sides, and then the result was I don't get caught up in the result. You know, to me, it's like I was laughing. What was great about the scrimmage for me on Saturday is normally you stand back there by yourself. I was back there. I had I made Nash. Nash had a clipboard out there. He was, you know, he was charting things for Terrence. I don't know what he was charting. I had Ty out there. I had Giff, and I was telling Giff, like, the hard thing as the head coach is when you create a turnover, you're fired up for the defense, you're angry at the offense, and vice versa. So very, rarely are you really happy in a scrimmage. You give up a big play, great job offense, what are we doing on defense? So, you know, really it's just more about the it's more about the process of it. Like, um, you know, are we on defense? Are we attacking the ball? Are we punching at the ball? Are we, you know, the quarterbacks weren't live, so that most of your turnovers come from the quarterback position. And then offensively, are we protecting the ball? And um, you know, the quarterbacks might not turn the ball over because they're not getting hit, but if they have one hand on the ball in the pocket, it's, it's eventually going to be a problem. So I, I just try to stay very process-oriented and look at the tape. Um, but, yeah, we're trying to push it on both ends because, you know, we had 31 turnovers last year. That's obviously way, way, way too many. We also took, we only, only took the ball away 14 times, including on special teams once. So you know, taking the ball away 13 times is not nearly enough. You know, you look at most – most championship caliber teams, you know, like they're they're in the twenties. So um, we're pushing it on both ends. Are you seeing a correlation between the guys who were the top performers during the winter in the mat drills, and the guys who are having really good springs right now? Um, I, I think they're independent. You know, I mean, I think um, I don't think we, you know, I don't think anyone had a bad winter. So you know, I, I'm pretty pleased with everyone. Um, you know, you, you try to have a great winter just to give you a chance in the spring. And then in the spring, you know, you compete. You, you, you look at, you try to have a great spring just to give you a chance heading into the summer. Then you try to have a great summer <laughs> just to give you a chance heading into fall camp. But at the end of the day, the best players will play, right? Now, we can't have anybody out there that won't do the standard, right, won't do the things that we ask of them. But this team's great about that. They do everything we ask. I mean, I was really pleased with today. I know you guys want to talk about the scrimmage, but the Tuesday after the first scrimmage, the, half the team has – Influenza. I mean, we were growing up, they called it the flu. Now it's influenza. It sounds way scarier. 
But, you know, half the team, I mean, guys are sick. Guys are out there battling through it. And I came out there today, like, you know, okay, I told the coaches, like, hey, let's get after them today. Let's coach hard today. Let's push them today. I, I was really happy. Like, they, I mean, you don't see me happy very often after practice, right? It's not my job to be happy. But I was really happy today with, like, them bouncing back and seeing a lot of the guys, you know, come out of that first scrimmage. You look at what you did. You know, our play, young people have a tendency to be like, oh, I played good. I played bad. You played how you played. Some things were good. Some things were bad. Just build off the good stuff, fix the bad stuff. And I saw a lot of growth today. So i um, pretty pleased right now, to be honest hey, with you. Coach, uh, the transfer portal opened yesterday across college football. I mean, with two weeks of practice kind of going on right in the middle of all that. How do you manage that? And what are maybe any challenges that might present with that 15-day window kind of right in your final two weeks? Of yeah, I mean, I think if anybody – on our team, once they go in the portal, it's open today. Um, that's their right. You know, obviously no one has yet. Um, I don't anticipate anybody going in. When we get done with spring, we'll have a couple guys will have a couple days to see if something's best for them. Um, you know, our, our guys are really transparent. We, we've had players on our team already have people from other teams contact them, you know, come in, walk in, say, Coach, look at this, show us a text message, show us this. It's just, it's a sad, it's a sad state of college football, when, you know. But the problem's not the problem's not the players. Let me, let me start there. The problem's not the players. So, um, I love our guys. I want everyone to be here, but I also want them. You know, I mean, you know, we had guys transferred other places last year. I've talked to their coaches. I've talked to them. How they doing? And um, and once you played for me, you played for me for life. So, um, yeah. I mean, maybe it's a unique challenge in terms of. Um, some guys like should I? But we're pretty transparent with our guys. Like if they want to come talk to us, we're here to talk to them. We, I ask the coaches after scrimmages to meet with guys one on one. I'm I'm always available. So, um, I just don't think it's really prudent. And maybe this is maybe this is Pollyannish, but like, I don't think it's prudent for me to like coach guys thinking about the portal. You know, because like you you know the worst thing you can ever do for a young person is not have high standards for them and not push them to greatness. So if you're afraid of pushing them because they might go to the portal, then you probably don't have the right guy anyway. Um, so you know so I'm sure things will happen, good, bad, but um, we're just going to coach the guys, try to get the team better, and pour pour everything we have into our players, both on the field, off the field, and personally. And um, you know if something if something happens, it happens. Ask about because a couple of veterans have just. <coughs> Uh, Vincent Shavers is a guy who they've liked how he's gotten after it. What, what, what's kind of jumped out about him as one of those? You know, I hate talking about freshmen, but uh, I mean, I, I, I certainly would never use a freshman's nickname, but they call him V9. Man, like he plays football the way you want it played, you know. So I say all that to say, like I normally wouldn't want to say it, but he, he earned he's earned the right to have someone talk about him. He flies around. Uh, I don't know if he's perfect yet. You know, I mean, he's got a lot of probably work to do football-wise, but he loves to play the game. He's unbelievably grateful. There's no entitlement to him. He works hard. Everything from academics to community service to football, he puts his heart and soul into. He's a blessing to be around the building and it's the type of kid you want to coach. Wide receiver-wise, Matt, how have you seen you, that group improve over the course of the spring season? Yeah, you know, uh, good and bad. Um, we are uh, significantly improved in that room. The guys have grown up. We brought some players in. Uh, the freshmen are really good, so we're making some big plays. Um, I don't know if our ball skills in the scrimmage were what I wanted. We had too many drops, in my opinion, or tough catches, tough catch plays. Our team's not. We're not a big press team, and so if you guys go back to me talking about early on about us having the ability to handle guys getting physical with us. We don't play a lot of that, so we don't see a lot of it. So I've had to manufacture some of that. I don't know how we're handling that. In fact, I'll say this. When I have seen us get pressed, I don't think we've improved enough at it. Um, but the great thing about Garrett is he's he's one of those coaches. For a young coach, he, he's not real defensive. He's like, okay, we need to improve this, 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 and this. But, like, our route running, our speed, our effort, our knowledge is like, been really a great jump. There's just things to improve. Ball skills, catching the ball with pressure on, you know, hard catches, and the biggest thing for me is just still, you know, we're going to go face some teams this year and they're going to line up and they're going to grab you at the line of scrimmage. And you, you, know, you might get one call or two, but you're not going to get 50. So you better learn, you know, you better learn to fight for yourself. And so, um, you know, again, everyone sees the wow plays. You know, we put out the highlights every day. Everyone sees the catch over the top, the one-handed shot, the shoulder catch, you know. But there might be three other plays where we couldn't get off press. And so it's our job just to keep working on the things we're not great at. And I think that's the main thing moving forward is, you know, just continue to improve our ball skills and um, handling press and handling people that are aggressive with us. You, you expect that Banks and, and Nair will lead the 
the group in that area and showing the younger guys, I mean, Alex, Alex Bullock in that category too, leading them um, to, to teach the younger players, first and second year guys, how to handle press and, and you know, work on their ball skills? Um, I, think, I think older players, especially new older players, I think the only thing they can really, they, they really mentor in is just in terms of like handling the pressure handling the workload, and then the off-the-field stuff. I think in terms of beating press and all that, I think it's got to be Garrett, you know. Now, Alex, because he's been here. Um, and then once you've kind of taught it, then then your older players start, you know. But they're so new to the program, just, you know, learning how we do things, learning how we teach things. And, again, because we're not seeing a ton of it. I've had to man- I man- manufacture some of it today. But um, as I've said before, Jamal's been great to have in the room, a guy who's had that much production I think the biggest lesson that Jamal shows the guys is I've had a ton of production, yet I come into work every day and, you know, grind. He, he works his tail off. And so I think that's a really important lesson that as you have success, you know, you don't arrive. <laughs> as you have success, you continue to work to have more success, and that's what I see from Jamal. Physicality, how do you balance that in spring between, yeah, we want to be physical and we want to get ready for Big Ten football, but also we don't want to – bang anyone up and we don't want to compromise you know, yeah I don't think about it we, I mean we, 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 we practice you know uh, you know we're not going to have a tag off scrimmage you know we're not going to you know I mean we, we there's a lot of days where we thud we don't tackle to the ground like our, our tackling to the ground reps are at a minimum but we're five and seven we're five and seven until we change that and so um, we, we have an amazing fan base and a lot of positive stuff around us all the time that excited for the new year we're five and seven until we're not and so and if we were Eleven and one, I'd be like, "Hey, we lost the game." And if we were twelve and zero, I'd say, "Yeah, but that doesn't." Count. I mean, we are going to always practice physical. How do you master your craft in this game if you don't do it? And so, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people win a lot of different ways. I'm not in any way talking about anyone else. I'm just talking about for us. I want to take great young people. I want to watch them get a degree, maybe two degrees, have a great experience here. But I also want to develop pro players. And to me, lifting is great. And running is great. And teaching them the game is great. They've got to practice and play. So we are really physical. You know, we put the Guardian caps on this year, which I'm excited about. But we're going to get guys banged up. Guys are going to get hurt. What I do believe, and I believe this with all my heart, is if guys learn to play full speed, the injuries get reduced. And so we try to do everything we can. We put grass in, everything we can to, to minimize the injuries. But, I mean, we have, we have some soft tissue stuff. We have some guys that got hurt from the season. But we've had nothing happen this year other than Leslie – and he, he'll be back. That would affect the fall. So um, our job is to make sure we have a good team. You know, we, 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 we're five and seven. We've got to practice. <coughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Thanks, Steve.